Hi guys, welcome to today's video, which is going to be on the expanded octet rule. So this is used when we're drawing the structures of molecules. Now the expanded octet rule relies, um, sorry, relates to elements that are in period three or below. Now because elements in period three have three electron shells, and the third electron shell can hold up to 18 electrons, elements in period three and lower, all right, so that means period three, four, five, six, seven, can have more than eight electrons in their outer shell. And this is really useful when they're trying to bond. So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples. The first one I'm gonna show is sulfur dioxide, SO2. So I've done a video on um, drawing molecular structures. Hopefully you've had a look at that. Um, and you go through drawing the electron dot structures for the atoms and then bonding them up and working out the shape based on if there's lone pairs of electrons around the central atom or not. So if you haven't had a look at that video, you might wanna watch that after this one. But we've got a sulfur, which we put in the middle. It's in group six, so it's got six electrons around it like this. We've then got two oxygens, so we've evenly spaced those out on either side, and they also have six electrons as well. Now what we're aiming for is the oxygen, which is in period two, wants to have eight electrons in its outer shell. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bond up the oxygen to the sulfur, okay? <clears throat> like this, now this oxygen here, this now gives it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it. If we have a look at the sulfur, the sulfur's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons as well. Now normally we think of eight electrons as being stable and that's what we want to get in the outer shell. However, we want to bring this oxygen over here to form a bond as well. Now, if this element in the middle was in period two, we'd have to do a coordinate covalent bond. And there's a video, a short video on coordinate covalent bonds, which I suggest you might want to have a look at as well. But because sulfur is in period three, it can have up to 18 electrons in its outer shell, it doesn't matter if it gets extra ones from the oxygen. So what actually happens is that this lone pair of electrons here actually forms a bond over to the oxygen as well. So this oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in its outer shell as well, and that's happy. The sulfur, if you have a look, now has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten electrons, okay, which is more than eight. But that's okay, because it's got three electron shells, because it's in period three, it can have more than 18 electrons. So this sulfur has expanded its octet, and this is the structure of the molecule. That lone pair of electrons up the top repels the bonding pairs of electrons downwards so that we have a V-shaped structure for our sulfur dioxide molecule. So in that case, sulfur expanded its octet, okay? It went beyond eight electrons in there, which is okay, because it can do. I'll show you one more. So the next one I'm gonna show you is one that involves phosphorus. And the two um, atoms that we normally look at um, for chemistry uh, that have expanded octets are normally phosphorus and sulfur. So I've shown you a sulfur one, so I thought I'd show you a phosphorus one, okay? Now, phosphorus, gonna go in the middle. That has five electrons around it because it's in group five, okay? And then this time we've got five chlorines around it. So we're gonna evenly spread those around as much as we can, okay? So we evenly space the atoms around the central atom. These chlorines all have seven electrons around them, so I'm gonna try and do those in quickly, sorry, because I know your time is valuable. All right, so we've got seven electrons around each of these chlorines, like this, and every chlorine um, will want to get eight electrons in its outer shell, okay? So obviously what we're gonna do, is fairly straightforward, you can see, is that we have um, five electrons on the phosphorus, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna to start to bond up uh, single electrons from the phosphorus to the chlorine. Now each chlorine has eight electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it, so they're nice and happy. Phosphorus here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Same as the sulfur did in the last one. Now again, that's okay because it's in period three, you can have an expanded octet rule. So this is PCL5. Um, it's a slightly different shape. It's not one of the ones that we normally look at um, here in um, chemistry uh, in year 11 or 12. Um, but basically what you've got is a phosphorus and then you've got the um, five chlorines evenly spaced around it in three dimensions. Uh, you don't need to know the shape of it um, or the name of it. Um, what you do need to know though is that it can expand its octet because it's in period three. So hopefully that's been fairly straightforward for you. Um, main thing to remember, if an element is in period three or below, 
right? It can have more than eight electrons in its outer shell. And it will do that when it needs to form a bond to another atom that can only have a maximum of eight electrons in its shell, okay? So hopefully this has been fairly straightforward for you. Um, as I said, there's a couple of other videos you might want to check out. The one in particular about coordinate covalent bonds for elements in period two when they can't expand their octet. And you might want to have a look at the one around just drawing structures and making sure you've got a bit of an idea of that as well. All right, as always, uh, if you've got any questions, just ask. If you've got any suggestions for any other videos you'd like me to make, please put them in the comments below. Thanks, guys.